J.D. Vance's words resonate deeply, reflecting a profound commitment to leadership that is grounded in the unwavering principles of conservatism. His stance on law and order, particularly in the context of the current border crisis, speaks to a growing concern among Americans about the integrity of our nation. Uh, one of the proposals that's in the platform, you've talked about it, Trump's talked about it, is a mass deportation. Now, I know you've said, he said, he'll start with the easy ones, the criminals, uh, people commit crimes, deport them. But he said, deporting 15 to 20 million people. How do you actually do that? Well, John, we have to start with the fact that we have a wide open southern border because our borders are actually set a lot of open border policies. They you know, she's not actually chosen the borders. Are, oh, she? that was what the media called her. She know, assumed but, but, the title. She had control over a lot of our border policy at a time was the, the when they were suspending. Of let, let me finish, John. The time they were suspending deportations, yeah. they stopped. Donald Trump's remain in Mexico policy, and they reinstituted catch and release. They basically threw open the gates of our country, and now we have a ton of fentanyl, a ton of people. But how are you going to get 10 to 15 to 20 million people? Well, the out first of the thing you have to do is to stop the bleeding, stop the open border, get Kamala Harris out of there, and actually re implement the remain in Mexico policy, rebuild or finish Donald Trump's border wall. And you do that and you stop the bleeding. Now, you're right. Once you do that, once you stop Kamala Harris's open border policies, you've got to do something with the people who are already here. And I think that you take a sequential approach to it. You are going to have to deport some people. If you're not willing to deport a lot of people, you're not willing to have a border when there are 20 million illegal aliens in but our country. But 15 million people, this is like, I mean. Well, John, I think it's the wrong attitude to take them. Okay, I mean, so there's so there, so there, doors and ask people for their well, papers. Again, but I, I, do? Let me, I think there's a wrong, this is the wrong attitude towards it, right? There are 20 million people here illegally. You start with what's achievable. You do that. And then you go on to what's achievable from there. I think that if you deport a lot of violent criminals, and frankly, if you make it harder to hire illegal labor, which undercuts the wages of American workers, I think you go a lot of the way to solving the illegal immigration problem. But look, President Trump is absolutely right. You cannot have a border unless you're willing to deport some people. I think it's interesting that people focus on, well, how do you deport 18 million people? Let's start with 1 million. That's where Kamala Harris has failed. And then we can go from there. The notion that our southern border is wide open, a direct consequence of the policies spearheaded by Kamala Harris, touches on the core values that prioritize the safety and security of our country. Many believe that a strong, enforceable border is the bedrock of national sovereignty. J.D. Vance's call to reverse these damaging policies is more than a political stance. It's a plea for the preservation of America's very essence. His methodical approach to illegal immigration, starting with the expulsion of violent criminals and tightening the noose on those who employ illegal workers, reflects a deep-seated belief in the rule of law and the protection of American citizens. Enforcing our existing laws isn't just a logical step, it's a moral imperative. J.D. Vance's critique of Kamala Harris's handling of the border crisis underscores the necessity for leaders to take ownership of their actions and the impact they have on the nation. His arguments for a shift in leadership aren't just about political maneuvering. They are a clarion call for greater accountability in government. Conservatives see in J.D. Vance's approach a step-by-step -step pragmatic strategy that tackles the immigration crisis with clear-eyed resolve. By focusing on achievable goals, like deporting dangerous criminals first, he offers a realistic pathway forward that doesn't shy away from the complexity of the issue, but instead faces it head on. J.D. Vance's narrative reframes the border crisis in a way that feels more manageable, easing the anxiety of those who feel overwhelmed by the enormity of the problem. His words not only highlight the shortcomings of the current administration, but also elevate the efforts of leaders like himself and Donald Trump who are committed to restoring order and security. By personalizing the issue through Kamala Harris's role as the border czar, he gives the public a tangible figure to hold accountable, turning abstract frustrations into a focused demand for change. For supporters of J.D. Vance and Donald Trump, these remarks aren't just political rhetoric. They are a powerful defense of U.S. sovereignty and a call to action for a nation in desperate need of practical, effective solutions.